I have to say it's really impressive to stand here and see all of you over there, uh, especially also to speak for you, Mr. President, and, and to speak here while there's so many great Finnish entrepreneurs. Uh, so I feel humbled and honored that a Dutch guy can share his uh, experiences uh, with, with growth and with entrepreneurship. Um, but before I do that, uh, I'm also the leader in the Netherlands of an in initiative uh, around more or less the same theme that you have here. Um, that's about scaling up companies. In the Netherlands, I think we're a world champion, or at least European champion, uh, with entrepreneurship. We have the most startups of, uh, of Europe. Uh, and that's, at the same point, that's the, that is the, um, the problem also. Because we have many startups, but we don't have much scale-ups. When you look at the growth companies in the Netherlands, we are below average. We are on the bottom. And that is weird. So this is also why the, the, um, the people from the government and others put people together to think about that issue. And we came up with an initiative um, to sort of try to solve for that um, problem. And that problem um, is more or less created by many factors, but one factor is, seems to be dominant. And that's in the Netherlands, when you're good, then you're good enough. So good is mostly good enough. Um, and Jim Collins, a famous uh, management book uh, guru, writer, um, he said that good is the enemy of great. And, and because when good is good enough, you will never become great. And the same goes for growth. If you want to grow, then you, good is the enemy of, of growth. So we have a program where we try, and we're going to launch this uh, in an event like this, by the way, uh, including our prime minister and including our queen, uh, which is even better. Um, <laughs> and we will launch that in, uh, in January. Um, and the program will be to, to inspire entrepreneurs to think bigger, to think in growth, just like we had the, 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 the speech right now. Um, so we are doing that in, in multiple ways, but the key in that is to make sure that you create role models. I started to be an entrepreneur because I saw a guy in, in a room like this telling me about his company, how he started. And it was a great, successful entrepreneur in the Netherlands. And I was 19. Um, so we need to have inspiring role models where other people think, yes, I want to do that too. Uh, the second of it is we want to um, activate um, the entrepreneurs themselves. Peter Drucker, another famous management guru, he said that the bottleneck is always on top of the bottle. And with growth, it is usually also the entrepreneur who is the, either the key for the company to grow or the key to the company staying to the size that it is. So we want to activate the entrepreneurs to first and foremost also work on themselves. Because if, if they change, if they grow, then their companies will grow with them. And the third thing we want to do is facilitate um, these entrepreneurs with a warm network ecosystem of coaches, mentors, uh, other service providers to help them grow and internationalize and uh, what have you. So to, ins to in inspire, to facilitate and to, to activate are the three key themes of this, uh, of this program. But I'm not here to talk about uh, this program. I'm here to talk about uh, my own experiences uh, with growth, which I'm, I'm, I'm happy to share. Uh, as mentioned earlier, I'm a serial entrepreneur. I, I led or founded um, three times a fast-growing company. The first one was right um, in the first uh, class of college, of, of, of uh, university. I founded the market research company. And market research is, is a terrible thing to, to scale and to, uh, and to grow. So early 90s, uh, we, we started that and we grew to about 10 million guilders, which is about five, five and a half million in revenue in about, in about 10 years. That's not much, you could say. For us, we thought we were on top of the world. We had about 120 people. We made a, a, a nice profit. Uh, but basically, I never worked at a company before. So, so the way we build our company is basically doing everything wrong first and then figuring out, okay, what is the right, what is the right way? The second company was a spin-off company that I started to build around 2001, 2002, um, and that was an online, online panel company. I won't bore you with all the facts about online surveys or online panels, but 
uh, I grew that company from 1 to 3 to 7 to 14 to 19 to 23 million. So that was a steeper growth curve. Um, then we sold that company to another company, which was called SSI. I retired. Um, and, and slowly, gradually, I did all the things that a retired entrepreneur does. So I started investing and, and making speeches like this. Uh, but I became more and more unhappy because I, my, my entrepreneurial dreams weren't fulfilled yet. So I got a call in 2008. Uh, Case, the, the company that bought you, uh, that was SSI, is going really, really bad. Can you help this company uh, get back on its feet again? And the company was managed by a manager. No offense for the managers. But managers act differently when multiple things change in the market. They, they start cutting costs and instead of really solving the problem behind the problem. So um, that was a challenge. When, the company, uh, when I, 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 I got the company in early 2009, the company was doing uh, 86 uh, million uh, with about 12 million of, uh, of EBITDA. Um, and uh, that company grew when I left to about 200 million, two and a half thousand people, 26 countries, and about 50 million EBITDA. So that was a huge path of growth. So you understand that the first company I ran was different from the second and the third. So what happened? Well, in between the companies, there was what they say a pivoting moment, a moment uh, before and after moment. And there was, uh, I remember it well, um, it was, I think, 2001, when I had a dinner uh, with my uh, coach, which actually, uh, he was an entrepreneur, also from Rotterdam, the place where I'm from. Uh, and I used to have talks with him every six weeks. And, and after one of those talks, or during one of those talks, he mentioned to me, Case, for the past 10 years, you've worked really hard at your company. We really worked long hours, not because we had to, because it was so much fun, 60, 70 hours a week. And he said, now it's time for you to work it yourself. So he, he pointed me to a program at MIT, which was a three-year program, three times four or five days, where they learned entrepreneurs of growing companies to grow faster. And I never knew about these programs. Uh, but I went there. I was in a room a little bit smaller than this. 65 other entrepreneurs were there. Um, a couple of from Asia, South America, mostly America. There were no Finnish, I'm sorry. I was the only Dutch guy. Um, and there's this guy in front of the class explaining to me, okay, when you grow, this is what happens. And he shared with me the different stages and phases of growth. That the amount of problems and the type of problems that you get in a company are a function of the complexity of the organization, which is mostly a function of the amount of people that you have. And around eight people, you will get these and these problems. And around 20 people, you will get these and these problems. And when you get to 50, you're getting these and these problems. And one of the problems that you get around 50 is that you have enough revenue or money to hire people in the management positions. And then they start, then they need to make the decision. So you as an entrepreneur can elevate your company to the next level. And usually then what happens as an entrepreneur, as a leader, you sort of like get in their way. You start to do things that they should be doing. You, you try to help them because they're so busy. Um, so that's a phase. And from that phase as an entrepreneur, you need to learn that, that you need to lead your company, not manage anymore. You need to lead your company. And from then, there's another phase at around 150, 350, and around 1,000. Uh, you also have to change your behavior as the, as the leader. And I was sitting there thinking, wow, I didn't know. Why didn't anybody tell me that everything we, we endured the past 10 years, that was, uh, that was logic, all the people crying, all the, all the systems going down, almost going bankrupt because we, we grew out of cash. Because when you grow, you never have money and you can grow um, to death. And it all happened to us. And it's stupid. So I, I, my thinking was, okay, everybody needs to know this. So this is how I became like a disciple of this, uh, of this, uh, this program. Uh, the guy was Fern Harnish. He, he wrote a book, uh, Mastering the Rockefeller Habits. And this is also the habits that he taught me that would help a company really grow well. He more or less created a diet for, for growing companies. When you do this and this and this, you will grow. Like a reverse diet. I lost 20 kilos. So you, you don't do that by just putting uh, a timestamp. Okay, by that time I will lose. No, you need to have a system and a process to 
lose weight and you yeah, need to have a system and a process to gain revenue or to gain market share or to, to grow your company. And more or less, this is what it is. He called it the Rockefeller habits and I implemented those habits in the second company, as you remember, and also in the third company. And it's, it's, it's very simple, but I don't have the time. I have a couple of minutes left uh, to explain what that system is. But make sure that with, you talk with the right people about the right problems in the right rhythm. Uh, create like a, a visionary b-hack, a, a big, hairy, audacious goal. Make sure that it doesn't feel like work. Get everybody on board. The whole company works together. Then you might maybe get a company in flow. And when a company is in flow, everything goes by itself. You are the winner in your market. And that's a technique, that's a tool, that's something that you can actually do and should do as a leader of an organization. Uh, there was something else that happened. Um, he pointed me out to a company, to an organization which is called Entrepreneurs Organization, which is a peer-to-peer -peer learning. We entrepreneurs, we don't listen to anybody else who is not an entrepreneur. I don't listen to my accountant, I don't listen because they don't know what it is to be an entrepreneur. So to who do you listen? You listen to another entrepreneur. This is why there's a group, 11,000 now globally, but you sit in a group uh, on a monthly basis and you get like peer-to-peer -peer coaching and learning, which has been incredibly um, effective for me because the key thing, and I've heard it in the earlier speech of Mr. President, the key thing is about making decisions. You need to be a decision-making person and when you, when you stuff all the decisions in your belly and you don't make a decision, then that's also a decision. And that's, that's the wrong decision. So it helps, a group like that helps making the right decisions. And something else happened. I went to a global event of that, of that organization and that global event, I sat next to a guy in a bus. We were going to a party and there's all entrepreneurs and he told me, yeah, I'm a really bad manager. I said, and, and I had at the time about 140 people, so I thought I was really, really cool. I'm a really bad manager because I have um, a company and I think I'm going to sell it because I'm just, I, I, just, I just hate it. And I said, wow, it cannot be that bad. And I was an entrepreneur for 10, 11 years. And he shared with me that he built a company in half the time, so five and a half, six years, of 8,000 people. And I was, I, was, I was like this and then I shrunk to about this size. I'm like, oh, man, it's like a little bit sitting next to you, uh, the, the, the next speaker of, uh, oh yeah, okay, you will hear him later. But um, that started something with me. That was in the early days of this other growth company, and I thought it changed my way of thinking. I, we were thinking the Netherlands. We were thinking we want to be the best in the Netherlands. But it changed the way that I was thinking about my company. And immediately we were going to be a European company and afterwards a global company. And I thought, yeah, why, why not? Why not be the, the largest company? So it, it inspired me to think differently. Um, I see I, I have two minutes. I want, to, uh, I want to say a couple of things. There has been um, a research on, on entrepreneurship and on growth. I, I really want to share the outcome with you. Where they did a study, and the study has been done in the Netherlands and also in the US, um, where they compared companies. Um, and, and you gave it already in, in your introduction speech, uh, Anu. But um, the single different thing that, that was different between the companies was not innovation, not people, not all the, all the others. The thing that matters most was indeed the ambition level of the entrepreneur, of the leader. So if you want, the, the companies that wanted to grow faster, grew faster. And of course, that has to do with energy and ambition and, and flow and everything else. So if you don't grow, you just don't want it enough. That's, that's my, that's my uh, opinion. Um, there's, another, um, there's another fact that I want to share. This is about uh, a Harvard Business uh, Study review. This says why entrepreneurs don't kill. And that's a pretty sad story because there's a long article, all the reasons why entrepreneurs don't kill. And uh, they're being too loyal to the first people they hire. They are set in their ways. They cannot change and what have you. But it, it ends happy. And it, it, it ends with the, um, with the sentence or with the conclusion. But there are entrepreneurs who can scale. And they are unified by one thing. They all want one thing. They have a thirst for learning. 
those are the indeed the entrepreneurs who can learn and therefore go and throw and grow to the next phase of their own organization. Thank you very much. I have a couple of words. Uh, ambition, um, ambition inspires growth. Learning is necessary to get the entrepreneur to the next level. And support is the third uh, word where entrepreneurs should support each other to come fast to the right sort of habits that you need to create growth. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Case de Young. Uh, we're really running out of time, but I, I want to take two questions. Okay. Uh, I, don't, I think the producers are going to hate me after that, but let's take two quick questions um, and then we'll move on. Do we have any questions in the audience? Just lift your hand up so then I can um, guide the person with the microphone to you. No questions? Okay. The deal is sealed. You are free. Thank you so much. Thank you. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh. I'm sorry. I didn't notice. There's a question, please. What the core company will be like? <laughs> um, the, um, you know, I'm, I'm waiting. I'm waiting for the fourth company. I've been investing in, uh, in, in companies, uh, but I see, I see many family-owned companies that need the sort of new thinking and what have you. So I've now learned to manage large companies. I know how it works. So there's many large companies who I think are just in, in the victim of bad management. So um, I'm looking to the right opportunity to have such a company or to, and then take that to the next level. Thank you. Wonderful, thank you, Mr. Kay Seong.